Welcome everyone. Uh, it is a, a privilege to uh, deliver the uh, Chief Executive speech today for the uh, annual meeting. Um, I need to just to open by saying that um, it is really a privilege to be the uh, Chief Executive of South Western Sydney Local Health District. Uh, the last three years have been uh, fantastic, challenging and demanding uh, for uh, myself and the executive team and all the executive uh, across the uh, LHD as we you know, have driven towards a whole lot of key priorities. And uh, before I start to look at a little bit of the detail of the things that have been achieved, I do want to just uh, re, uh, reaffirm what the uh, chairman has said. The last year, we've spent a lot of time uh, on our strategic plan, and many of you in the room today have been part of that process. Uh, the critical value of the strategic plan is not only the document itself, it's the process that's gone on to actually pull it together. And there has been extensive consultations across the LHD, uh, both at a staff uh, level, but also out in the community. And a number of those I attended. And as I said in a speech recently that I gave, you never, you never judge the value of something on the size of things, uh, rather on the quality. Uh, and I went to the one at Liverpool, there was only a small group of us, uh, I think there might have been about 15, uh, but the input, the quality, uh, the extent of comment, uh, the reflection that they gave at the meeting was, was really fantastic, I'm just telling you. So uh, I can only commend uh, the comments of the Chair that um, the work that went on to get our documents together and also our planning unit, I know, who spent many long hours uh, in the, uh, the write-up and I thank them greatly for that. The value of it, though, it provides an absolute foundation for the LHG going forward. It sets very clearly what our priorities are and what our strategies are going into the future. It forms very much uh, my reporting process to the board on a monthly basis in terms of what we're aiming to achieve and gives them very clear direction over the next five to ten years uh, about what this uh, what this LHG uh, needs to uh, needs to achieve together. Uh, the chairman spoke around the key strategic areas. Uh, there are eight, eight uh, key strategic areas, and what I thought I would do is, as time is a little limited, I just want to focus on a couple of the key things. And I just want to open also by saying, though, that many, many strategies that are already in that strategic plan are well and truly on the way. And I did a little red reckoning the other day with, with planning around and thinking, you know, the one issue around strategic plans, and you hear it commonly, is that they uh, get uh, developed, and this is quite long and extensive because it include, includes our clinical services planning in there also, and you hear, and they gather a lot of dust. Well, I warn you, this one's not gathering dust. Uh, in my ready reckoning recently, uh, I uh, need to give myself a level of confidence that we're uh, on track working on the strategies, and so believe me, we are. So uh, this one will not be a short document, or what do you call it? One of those ones that you put on the coffee table and it looks good, can I say. Uh, so uh, just a couple of some key things uh, that we've been able to really work uh, very hard on a lot of effort has gone in. In terms of one of the first ones, and there was a lot of debate when we put this one in, and as I see uh, Dr. Cracknell sitting up there, um, this was one that he argued very strongly for that we needed to put in as a specific strategic direction. It was about build capacity to effectively service growing demands uh, for healthcare. That was bedded in a number of the other strategies, but there was a strong argument that we put that up the forefront. And, and the work specifically around that is tied to our asset plan. Uh, we've prepared our asset plan, we've identified for the state the five top priorities. As you know, we have funding for the Campbelltown project. Uh, the early works were completed this, fin uh, this uh, financial year and uh, the um, major works now have completed. And we only took the minister there just recently um, on one of her number of visits, could I say, and the first one, kind of, we were really not out of the ground, and now we are well and truly out of the ground, and, and, and are uh, and growing at a great pace uh, in terms of height of the building. Look, and that's really critical. Uh, that piece of uh, work for us in terms of getting Campbelltown up is uh, is really is really uh, significant. The growth of uh, activity <coughs> across the Macarthur area is significant, and we need uh, that hospital to uh, to manage that workload. Uh, I do need to say to everyone, and Liverpool people here will know it very well, it's a challenge to keep a hospital going, but also build when the capacity, uh, when you need the capacity, but also um, to actually manage the workload in that period of time. So next year, Campbelltown will be a challenge, uh, but we are striving ahead. 
One of the things uh, in health, though, and for those uh, who have worked on capital projects for a while, you actually need a rolling number of projects. And so the board is advocating very strongly uh, around our top five priorities in terms of getting the next one on. It takes probably about three years to get it up, planned, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, funded and on track. Uh, so uh, those priorities that we have in our asset plan to meet growing demands out here are really critical. Uh, the other one that is very much linked in that strategic plan is we've done a really nice, uh, I think, piece of work with our Medicare Local, which is our next um, strategic direction, which is about our partnership with the Medicare Local. We've had a long history of working uh, with what was then the Divisions of General Practice under the reform of the federal <coughs> government, the Medicare Locals were created. And for us, there is um, a great opportunity because the Medicare Local boundaries are linked up specifically with ours. And so we have already established uh, an integrated care committee to really not just look at how we can integrate services solely, but to really reform and remodel services going into the future. And one of those pieces of work that's linked with our asset plan is our, is our integrated primary care centre. Um, a, a very um, great piece of work was done uh, specifically, I think, by the work of David Lawrence uh, in our planning unit who brought a whole lot of people together but also created a great document and a model of care. Uh, and we're looking at, at, at developing that IPC in Orange Park with our Medicare local uh, partner. And for us, uh, that's a really important piece of work because it's about saying we're not going to build more hospitals. Our plan doesn't look at more hospitals uh, in our district, but it does look very much at uh, integrated primary care centres, which is a principle saying that we need to work across the continuum in terms of primary, secondary and tertiary care, but also that we move, need to move care out to where people are living and we need to provide it in a primary care setting, uh, and, but in an integrated way. And so it will be a challenge around how we get this together and how we form up the model. Uh, it's going to the board uh, at the next board meeting, but that's an exciting piece of work and it's been a real great opportunity to work with our Medicare local to reform services, remodel what we're currently doing uh, and uh, think very carefully about how we meet the growing needs of the population of South Western uh, over the next uh, five to ten years. Uh, the next one uh, that I wanted to talk about was uh, partnering with our external providers. Very clear message in our strategic plan that says the need, there is an absolute need for us to work with uh, external providers, both not-for-profits, private um, and other community agencies. And look, I think South Western has a great reputation of doing that uh, across the board extensively, but I think there are also opportunities for us to really take that further. We've worked uh, recently on developing of what we now know as the Peach Project. There was a piece of um, funding that the Ministry announced around community uh, community-based palliative care initiatives, and uh, we've partnered with Silver Chain, uh, who are a not-for-profit agency who have done a fair bit of work in uh, Western Australia, and uh, we're interested in coming to the East Coast. We've partnered, we've partnered with them on developing uh, this package of care, predominantly uh, to maintain people in their home at end of life uh, and, and, and maintain the services after hours. What was interesting, though, is the model had been trialled here in South Western, surprise, surprise, was very well received, uh, and the Ministry approached me and said, could we do it over five LHDs? And with great gusto and enthusiasm, I said, no worries, we'll be fine. And uh, we had the launch yesterday, uh, and it was an excellent launch. Uh, the, deputy, uh, the DG was there, and the board of Silver Chain. And the reason why um, I wanted to do it was for a couple of reasons. One, the model had shown that we that uh, care, that kind of package of care would be very good, and the evaluation demonstrated that. But what I also wanted to demonstrate is that South Western Sydney could manage a program across districts, manage a program in terms of the communication, the coordination, and the development of services. And it's not easy to do that. Surprise, surprise, um, many of the LHDs work quite differently, and so um, how they're structured, how they're set up, how they deliver services is very different. Uh, but an extensive amount of work was put in place uh, to get that uh, to get that established, and it launches uh, next. To, uh, I think we've got our first patient, little test patient, I think, on Friday, but it actually gets launched next week. And that is really a demonstration of the maturity of South Western. That not only can we work well internally, but we can actually partner externally with agencies like Silver Chain, which has been a real learning experience. But we've also been able to partner with other LHDs and actually get services up. 
And that's about us growing in terms of our capabilities and skills, but also demonstrating to the state and to other LHGs that we can play uh, in that uh, in that arena, which I think has been fantastic. That uh, piece of work will, uh, will be extensively evaluated. It's a three-year program, um, and uh, the state are really looking to us in terms of the leadership there, uh, and it'll be interesting to see how the evaluation progresses. One of the things that the strategic plan very strongly focuses on is the need to operate in a networked arrangement. And we have talked about it for many years in health. We know about it, and we see um, high-level services networked at a state level, but it's also critical uh, that we network services um, internally within the LHD. And, and the reason for that, we can't have services everywhere. Our ability to actually have the expertise at every single site is not possible uh, from a resourcing point of view as one side of it, but also it's attracting the appropriate uh, staff to actually be able to do that. So it's really appropriate for us to actually network across our hospitals. And look, the amount of work that's been done and thinking that's gone into this, I think, has been fantastic over the year. And the one that we looked at was uh, around the hand service here at uh, Liverpool. And I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about it because it's, it's a valuable reflection on the importance of, of networking and thinking about how we deliver services and remodeling services uh, into the future. Um, the way that the hand service was set up here, uh, without going into too much of the detail, and Anthony, you would know as well as I do, we were getting lots of complaints, lots and for lots of different reasons. And we knew that it was putting pressure on the Liverpool's theatres, but also we did believe that we could actually offer it in a different way and that there would be value in actually moving it across to a facility such as Arnold's over at Fairfield. Uh, we got a group together to look at a project plan to see how we could do it. And I've got to tell you, one of the things, please reflect, uh, is that we do lots of things in health, but moving health services between facilities, it ain't easy, can I say. And that's for lots of reasons. Services are established in particular facilities, clinicians have a particular way of operating, and so you have to negotiate a whole set of, uh, of processes and systems to do it. A working group got together uh, with some leadership from both Fairfield, Liverpool and the LHD, and we uh, just uh, on the 2nd of September moved that service from Liverpool to Fairfield. And that was because there was cooperation across the facilities the clinicians worked really closely with us in the development of that service model. And did we argue and have much of debates about it? Yes, we did. But we were able to do it. And I think, uh, I'm correct me, in the first week, in the first month, I think we had a couple of people over our, our, over our surgical thresholds. And then we've been fine pretty much ever since. And I've not received a complaint since then in terms of the service. That's a great example of what networking can do and how, how it's important that services across our LHD are linked up. And as Liverpool's role grows uh, into even a stronger tertiary, tertiary hospital, the need for it to provide support around the LHD and for the other hospitals to network closely with it and one another will become uh, more and more important. The other one that the, um, the chairman focused on a little bit, and I'd just like to uh, highlight it, uh, because time is running out a little bit, and I have a couple of other things I want to say, which is around uh, embed education and research uh, within service delivery. Southwestern Sydney has a great reputation as a, as a great educator. Uh, I think uh, Kong is leading at the moment our move of the uh, CWD over to, uh, to the LHD and the split of services. And uh, when I looked the other day at the uh, education program that's been put together for our staff, and this is the internal program, it is extensive because I think we've had a commitment and we know that supporting and developing staff is absolutely critical in terms of taking services into the future. And a lot of work has been done by that group in that regard. But the other important one that we spent a lot of time on in the last year was the development of our research strategy. And there, for us, I believe that there are a number of pillars and research is an absolute pillar for us. I said at the research showcase the other day that we... Um, have a great reputation at a national and now at an international level. We have some young uh, researchers uh, established here. We have a fantastic partnership with Ian. We have everything in place now, I think, to go forward, and we will uh, work now really quickly to build on that. That research strategy, again, sets out some very clear strategies that we need to put in place, creates a great foundation, and building on what we've already achieved, uh, I think, will be fantastic for us for the future. The other value, obviously, of promoting the research within within the LHD is very much around attracting um, 
clinicians to our area who are areas of specialty that they want to nurture and develop in Southwestern, and linking that with their clinical practices and chairman spoke about in relation to translational research uh, is, is will be fantastic for the future. And you already see a lot of that happening now and across a spectrum from both clinical work, lab work, uh, and, uh, and a whole lot of community research that is being done. We cover the spectrum. And we are, as uh, I think Elizabeth Foley said the other day, at the research showcase developing a fantastic reputation in that regard. I haven't covered all the eight, Mr Chairman. There have just been a couple. Uh, but I just want to, uh, before I conclude, I just want to um, uh, take just a couple of minutes to acknowledge uh, um, some of the uh, people in the, uh, in the district. Um, I open by saying that it's a privilege to be the Chief Executive of South Western. Many people ask me about our work out here, and I said, listen, uh, the uh, GM of Fairfield says Fairfield's the best in the West Bank. I actually think this LHG is fantastic. And I say it with good reason. Why do I say that? If you look at our performance as an LHD, on yes, KPI is set out by the Ministry, but we're measured against a whole lot of things. Our performance as a team out here over the last financial year has been fantastic. We brought in a $1.4 billion budget uh, to the tune of about 200, about 200,000. That is a fantastic achievement. Uh, and it's only achieved because of everyone who's worked uh, very closely together. In the last three years, uh, the board has been established under the chairmanship of, of Professor, uh, Professor Harris. And truly, uh, it's been a privilege to work uh, with them. They are incredibly committed. They are incredibly motivated. I get challenged every board meeting about something that I think I've got it and I just haven't quite nailed it, but that's the value of it. And I, I just want to reaffirm to all of you, I thank you for your commitment and your time and your effort that you did because it's every month, committees, board meetings, that are not five minutes people, they are extensive amounts of time. The reading beforehand, they come very well prepared and I'm always challenged about the issues. So thank you for your, um, for your, uh, your commitment to the LHG. Um, to the executive and to the general managers and the service directors who work tirelessly uh, uh, at, uh, across the health service and attending those bloody meetings that uh, we seem to constantly need to get to uh, and uh, where papers need to be prepared, read, etc., they also give, give uh, a huge amount. Um, I want to also just highlight uh, the work that's done from all the clinicians across the LHG, and I mean that in the broader sense, I can interpret that, that broadly. Uh, the quality of services, the commitment, and on Friday night, uh, the Director of Operations, Graham, and I went to Fairfield's 25-year anniversary. They were nearly bursting with enthusiasm, motivation uh, about not only their accreditation review, but just about you know, working at Fairfield Hospital Island is probably the best way I can say. And I see that replicated when I go to facilities, when I talk to staff. It's not only at one place, it's across the organisation. And that's what good quality care is about, It's when people are motivated and enthusiastic. Um, and so I really want to acknowledge all of our staff in terms of, what, of the contribution that they make on a day-to-day -day basis. It really is fantastic. And I also don't want to conclude without acknowledging our community representatives and our volunteers, uh, people who give of their time without any ask, any repayment or whatever, uh, and constantly. If I look at the myriad of committees and programs that our community reps are involved with, it is you know, a bit uh, mind-blowing. And at Fairfield's um, uh, accreditation review, the surveyors highlighted uh, the amount of uh, community participation uh, that uh, was occurring and also I uh, gave them a, uh, a merit uh, for that. And that's not just at Fairfield, can I just tell you, I see it extensively. And the great thing out here in South Western is that, is that our community reps are involved from board committees uh, right across the facilities uh, to community-based services you know, in, every, in every different way and I think uh, that's fantastic. Finally, that, uh, what I would also like to uh, for everyone to remember is that we are here about patients, clients, carers and their families. That's our business, that's what we need to be focused on. So when we're um, planning services, you know, looking at how we spend our money, uh, the critical factor for us is about delivery of care uh, to our patients. And we are challenged out here every day in terms of demand, and yet every day uh, this LHD steps up and steps up higher. 
and uh, can only offer to you all my sincere thanks.